Arthur C. Clarke was famous for saying, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And for flat earthers and spaces fakers, it is a magical world. Let me take a moment to show the flat earthers and especially their spaces faker cousins some magic. This is a nebulous region designated IC405, otherwise known as the Flaming Star Nebula. It's located in the constellation Auriga and easy enough to find if you know how to navigate the sky. And let me shut down the inevitable, oh, NASA made this conspiracy nonsense that I know will come up from the outset and tell you I made this. I did it with a telescope I bought from a department store. A telescope mount whose job it is to turn at the same rate that the Earth rotates in the opposite direction so that a telescope can keep on imaging the same region of the sky for the long periods of time, sometimes hours or even days, that it takes to capture such faint objects. And a digital camera that was attached to the telescope. Now you can get frustrated and tear your hair out and tell yourself, oh, this is all fake and NASA did it. Or you can try to educate yourself and watch the 150 some odd videos that I have made on how to go about capturing and developing astrophotography. Because literally anybody can do this. If you get a telescope, a mount and a camera, you can capture these images of space too. Because space is real. Here's another image that I produced from just a couple months ago. Its catalog designation is NGC 1333. But its ordinary name is the Embryo Nebula, and it's located in the Perseus constellation. And let me repeat, Flat Earthers and Spaces Fakers, NASA didn't make this image, I did. In fact, I have several videos on my channel covering details regarding this image. And if you want to learn how images like these are photographed and developed, you can study that material and the material put out by other astronomers and astrophotographers at any time. Literally, nothing stops you from buying the equipment and developing the skill set and doing this for yourself. Because, you see, it's not magic. Little imps in the telescope didn't make it. Magic camera gnomes didn't put it on the camera sensor. And NASA didn't send up people in weather balloons to paint it on the sky. Let me share just one more. And again, I'll remind you, I take full credit for these images. I shot these images with my own telescope and camera. This is the famous Horsehead Nebula, designation Barnard 33. And it's located in the Great Orion constellation, right near another nebula called the Flame Nebula. In fact, let me just pull out another image I shot with a smaller telescope, which would be like zooming out, and then you can see them both together in their relationship to each other. And I made both these images, and you can too. All you need to do is buy a telescope, a mount, and a camera. See, I'm not the only one doing this. Literally millions upon millions of people all around the world do astrophotography. And they can image all these things because Earth is a globe floating in an amazing cosmos. Anyway, I'm not here to debate with flat earthers and spaces fakers. Debating with cultists, as I said in the last video on this topic, is a complete waste of time. Scientists, and not just scientists, but intelligent people, start with reality and admit that it's complex and deep and they don't understand it. And then they study the information to see how reality fits together and that shapes their understanding of the universe. Very much in contrast to this, however, flat earthers and their cousin spaces fakers start with position and then force the evidence to fit it. And any evidence that doesn't fit, they just deny it. They claim that it's a big part of some ridiculous conspiracy. So I just am entirely unwilling to waste time arguing or debating with people who approach their understanding of the world that way. Persons that do that aren't defending facts. They aren't really even defending their perspective. They're defending a fragile fantasy that somehow gives them a sense of comfort. And evidence isn't going to help with that. Instead, I'm here to say that every single flat earther in space is faker, is lying to themselves, to you, has been grifted, and I think really knows it deep down inside. And I can say this categorically because it would be so easy for them to test what it is they say they believe, but they won't do it. So, here are the three tests made possible by modern technology that any flat earther in any spaces faker could do right now that would categorically and beyond a shadow of a doubt demonstrate the true nature of the world. That is, were they really interested in learning it. Step one, you flat earthers can go to Antarctica during its summer. In the ridiculous model of the flat earthers version of Earth, the sun cannot shine 24 hours a day in Antarctica. Well, you know, despite your nonsense conspiracy theories about how nobody can go there, you can not actually go there. And if any of you were really, really committed to understanding the world around you, you'd make it a point to do so. Your real motivation for not going there is that if you go there and see the midnight sun, just like so many people have already, then you'll have to confront the reality that your flat earth fantasy is nonsense. And of course, if you then share that with your flat earth fantasy compatriots, 
They'll reject you, just like what recently happened to another flat earther. Since when I've brought this up before, flat earthers have said, well, nobody can go to Antarctica. I'm going to just come out and ask, is using Google outside your skill set? In case it is, I'll do it for you. Here, I just Googled Antarctica tours. A lot of possibilities popped up. These were just the first four. Anybody can go to Antarctica. Cruise ships go there all the time. Any civilian can get a job at an Antarctic outpost. There are all kinds of means to travel to Antarctica. And if you flat earthers and space fakers were really committed to understanding, you would do that. Instead of wasting your money going to flat earth conventions and buying the books and attending the seminars that are promoted by flat earth hucksters who are happy to take your money, or wasting time on flat earth conspiracy websites, you could just save up a little money and go down there and see the midnight sun for yourself. Ultimately, doing this is so easy and so obvious that if you won't do it, the only reasonable conclusion is you have an ulterior motive. 2. Buy your own telescope mount and camera. You can get a good telescope from most any decent-sized department store these days. I mean, heck, Walmart sells them. And you can often also buy basic tracking mounts from department stores, especially those that are made for small telescopes and cameras. They run from a couple hundred dollars to as much as a thousand. Though, unless you've learned how to navigate the sky, to find your way around all the constellations and such, which is quite a demanding skill to develop, you would probably do better to get a go-to mount, which is a mount in which you can tell it, go to this coordinate, this constellation, this nebula, this planet, and it'll point your telescope at the object so that you can begin imaging it. Those are a little pricier, but they can still be had for under a thousand dollars. And you can get a telescope camera for as little as three or four hundred dollars. And with these things, you can start taking decent images of what's in the sky for yourself. Heck, if you just want to do this as an experiment and you want to spend as little money as possible, you can take $500 and buy a cheap smart telescope and you'll be able to take some okay images of what's in space. This is because space is very real, but a lot of what's up there is a bit too dim for us to see. But if you point a camera at it for a bit, it'll be revealed. But there is a lot in space that's bright enough to see with your eyes. Especially with a little optical help, you can just get a good pair of binoculars, say 10 by 50. They have good light collection capability and a modest magnification. And with a pair of such binoculars and rudimentary skill in learning to find your way around the sky, you can easily see some of the bigger, more obvious objects in space, such as the Pleiades Cluster and the Great Orion Nebula. By the way, I shot both those images that I just put here as well. NASA didn't make these images. These images were shot with an ordinary telescope and camera, because space is not fake. But what is fake is your belief in your belief. You see, if you're unwilling to just test what I'm telling you, get yourself a telescope mounting camera or a cheap smart telescope or at least a pair of binoculars and take a good look at the sky for yourself. This is so easy to do, so affordable and so accessible. And if you aren't willing to do it, what it says very, very clearly is flat earthers aren't really committed to understanding reality. They're really committed to hiding from it. Three, and perhaps the real coup de grace is by a weather balloon. Attach a camera and a transmitter to it and send it up. An ordinary weather balloon that you can buy yourself can easily reach altitudes of over 30,000 meters or over 90,000 feet. In 2002, a specially made weather balloon reached an altitude of over 52,000 meters. But the ones that you can buy for yourself, often for under $1,000, can easily reach altitudes of 30,000 meters. So, for just a few thousand dollars, the cost of a weather balloon, a camera, and a transmitter, once those balloons cross about 10,000 meters or 35,000 feet of altitude, you'll begin to see the curvature of the Earth. At that point, it becomes obvious. And by the time the balloon is reaching 20,000 meters, it's very, very obvious. In fact, many transcontinental jets travel above 10,000 meters, so you can see the curvature of the Earth from a window seat on one of those. But to get a really spectacular view, send up a weather balloon. And it's often cheaper than buying a plane ticket. The cost of this technology has come down so much and it's become very accessible. Anybody can do this. Educators and science clubs and middle schools, high schools and colleges send up weather balloons all the time, but anybody can buy them. You can contact companies like Stratostar at stratostar.com and arrange to get a weather balloon with all the equipment that you'll need. And if you just use that magic tool, Google, you can find many other suppliers of weather balloons and related equipment. Another company, scientificsales.com, sells weather balloons for anywhere between $7 for a very small one and $395 for a large one. You would naturally want to get one of the larger ones so that it has the capacity to carry your camera and transmitter. But ultimately the point is, 
This is a very accessible technology and an experiment you can easily conduct for yourself and see the curvature of the Earth for yourself. Because when you send up the balloon and it's your camera and your transmitter and you inevitably see the curvature of the Earth for yourself, then you can know that what you have seen is factual, it's real. Now, I don't work for any of these companies. I don't get any kickback from them and I don't care what you use. There are a lot of dealers of weather balloons. Heck, you can even buy them off sites like Amazon. And then you'll have to figure out how to configure your own camera with some form of telemetry so that you can be sure to get the information back from your investment. But in any case, you're looking at a very small expense, at most a few thousand dollars, and usually considerably less. I mean, the weather balloon science clubs are sending up are often only a few hundred to a thousand dollars. And if even that sounds expensive, Consider the price of it against the cost of various flat earth books, videos, or conventions you might have gone to, or countless hours wasted on flat earth websites. Because while all the experiments I've mentioned might have some monetary expense associated, imagine the deep and terrible cost of so much time devoted to a lie. As I stated in my previous video, both flat earthers and spaces fakers, these aren't movements, they're simply cults. And how you know something is a cult is its members don't want actual evidence, at least not evidence that disproves their position. Cult members are not actually motivated to understand anything. They have an agenda and they will fit facts to it or reject those facts if they cannot. But if you do happen to be a member of the Flat Earth or Spaces Fake cults, I have just handed you three conclusive methodologies to test the nature of the world and space for yourself. So, some of you cultists have attempted to argue with me in the last video, in fact quite a few, that video got about 1500 comments, which is a crazy amount, that video only has about 15,000 hits at this time, and I haven't responded to one single flat earth or a space is faker. I'm not interested in arguing with a devotion to stupidity. I've seen the midnight sun, I shoot images of space, I've flown in the window seat on transcontinental aircraft and seen the curvature of the earth, so I have no interest in arguing with you over any of these things. But the reality is, you can do any of those things for yourself. You can experiment and see for yourself if you need to. It is so easy and accessible these days. But if you're unwilling to do that, then it means that you are unwilling to be reasonable. Not just with me, but also with yourself. And there's no point in debating with a person committed to that degree of stupidity. Like every cultist, you simply have a position, and you're going to force the facts to fit it. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be a person with the courage to face reality and face the facts? If so, then test your beliefs. I've just pointed out to you the three ways it can do so proof positive. And if not, keep visiting your conspiracy websites, going to the conferences and buying the books and other products from your grifters, and convincing yourself that you are in possession of the elite special knowledge that nobody else understands because they're all sheeple. That is so not special. That's how every cult since the dawn of time has operated. What kind of person you want to be is in your hands. I think I've said enough on this topic and it's time to get back to actual science and astrophotography. To everyone else out there, the same people who are grown up and deal with facts and science and reality, thanks for watching and, and I hope you found this video informative. And if you know any flat earthers, let them know about these experiments. These are two tests of the nature of the world and the cosmos over them that just might save them from years devoted to ignorance and grifters. And for those of you who are also astrophotographers, have a blast getting out there and imaging this amazing cosmos in 2025.